I'm just saying, if you want to build a brand, you need to be intentional about this being a, a movement or a wave, mm -hmm. not just I did it today. Yeah. Right. Like you know, every time I do. Right. All right, y'all, I'm in line again at the at the basketball game. Uh, what y'all think? Should I pay for the person in front of me or behind me? No. And that's the thing that I do. And I guarantee you, if you do that uh, often enough, people will see you at a game and say, no, I want to be behind you. <laughs> the Dorito Dave thing, bro. Every, every single speaking gig I got over those two year periods, they gave me the check. I take the check, but it always came with a bag of Doritos mm -hmm. because that's the narrative that I pushed some people like it some people don't anybody who's watching this video like i don't care if you're 20 30 40 50 60 years old if you are trying to make it in life become world class at one thing jay-z right you go from rapping about drugs and then he becomes this playboy player right i got i got all this money and then he becomes conscious Wealth conscious it's, yeah, yeah he definitely for sure. yeah 100. him Jay-Z was a mixture of rebrand and evolution. Yeah. And that's that's like when you start changing. Like at one point, he's like, I'm done with this rap thing. I'm a businessman. Like I yeah. am the business man. Welcome to another edition of Social Proof, where we interview dope entrepreneurs who are doing amazing things. My name is Donnie Wiggins, your favorite business coach. How do I know I'm your favorite business coach? Because I just told you that I am. And I'm sitting here with <laughs> David, man. I am a podcaster <laughs> and uh, I'm nervous because Brian, I don't know. What are you up to, man? Dude, we have Brian I'm, back, y'all. Yeah, give it up. Man. Wherever you're watching this right now, give it up for Brian coming back to the audience that. right now. That. It's Mr. been Walter. a minute since we had our cousin here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? What's no, up, man? Dude, I'm doing it, feeling absolutely amazing, man. Just move new city. Uh, business Welcome doing bigger Atlanta. things. I appreciate it. You know, business doing bigger things. I'm just super excited what the next couple months is going to look like, you know, different environment, but the straight, same strong entrepreneur just in a different environment. I'm super yeah. excited. Why Atlanta? Why'd you move? Uh, I just know a lot more like-minded people. Like I, I lived in New York all my life and it's just like New York's a great city. Like, you know, you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. But the thing about it is that there's just really not too many young entrepreneurs out there. And just Atlanta was the Mecca for that. You know what I'm saying? I felt like I couldn't really, I didn't have people in my contact list. That I could just be like, Hey bro, let's just go, let's go mastermind real quick. Or let's, everything was like, it's either the club or like you should stay at home. Yeah. So for me to really just kind of be in my environment that I wanted to, that I felt was conducive to what I needed to do. I felt this was a city. And also just rent prices overall. Like New Gosh. York is just ridiculous. Yeah, I, I would imagine. Like so, the same apartment that I'm at now is probably would have like been triple. In I'm New York. curious. Did, did you find an apartment or like a condo? Uh, it's an apartment, but it's in like a high rise building. Yeah. How much, are, how much did you find something for? Because I'm in the market right now and everything's starting with a six. Maybe it's just me. Yeah. So I have a two bedroom, two bath, about 1300 square feet, 1350 square feet for about 3,800. I'll ask you the building offline. Uh, it's, it's you're not, you're not gonna want to stay It's here. amazing, and I toured about twelve apartments. You know what he's? You know where he's staying? No, no he, but no. based on the price, B, text me real quick. There's gonna be making something. There's gonna be something about that building that you don't like. It's mm. either the place or area. I'll, I'll tell you this much: my girl picked it, so. You got your phone? Yeah. Will you just text me the spot real quick? <laughs> Damn, right now? Yeah, because yeah. they're literally making appointments for me oh, right no, now. I, I am you, I in desperate you. need for a new home. Yeah. I am just, I am feeling closed in by all of the dark mahogany red oak wood and, you know, all that. I need something new and vibrant. And I've been in my current building for nine years. I have not been in the same place for Where nine years ever. Not building, but like area. Atlantic Station. I love the area. Okay. I wish there was a renovated unit in my building. That Atlantic would be the answer. area, not Atlantic State. Not the little area. Right, yeah, I got you. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm in Not that part. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm in Midtown. Like, Midtown, Midtown. That's what I need. Yeah. You sent me the building? Yeah, yeah, I just said it to you. I'm in Midtown, Midtown. Are you familiar with Let the building? See. Oh. I told you, bro. <laughs> the numbers ain't right. It's what just you not mean? Right. Oh. Why are you trying to shade me on a pod? No, 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 no. So it's actually the competitor to the number one building on my list right now. Which is what? Novel. I know Novel. I saw Novel. Love it. But Ooh. these are just too small. I got me, another grown person, and the way the bedrooms are set up, we're not far enough apart. How much square feet are you looking for? Hold on, first off, can we talk about something entrepreneurial? This is like, entrepreneurial. Yeah, entrepreneurial. You gotta, this is decision no, making. This is, not, this is decision making in real time. Uh, yeah, listen, so well, I'm currently in 1,700 oh square feet. Oh my gosh. Okay. Two bedroom or three bedroom? You care? Two bedroom, two and a half care? baths. Okay, that makes sense. That no, building right? doesn't have a half bath. Do you care at all? 
Probably not. Who can't? Yeah. Why don't y'all talk about but Atlanta? But it's a gorgeous building. Welcome, welcome to Atlanta. Okay. <laughs> he's, he's a hater because he's not looking for a condo. <laughs> he wants one, though. Um, I do. Yes. I do. You're... Uh, you have event spaces. Yeah, so I actually York. just, uh, I recently just sold the last brick and mortar one. So I'm completely out of the brick and mortar space and we're completely online now. I made a, like a YouTube video on it. Wait a like, minute, event hey. spaces online? So like the, the consulting program. So we, I was in the brick and mortar for five years mm -hmm. and I just, July 1st, I sold my last one Okay. Uh, before moving to Atlanta and now we just focus 100% on event space elites online. Why yeah. did you want to get out of the brick and mortar side of it? It was really a focus thing for me, like just kind of looking at what it took for me to do the kind of numbers that I wanted to do as an entrepreneur overall. Mm -hmm. I wasn't prepared to do the work that was required to do that in that type of business. Mm. Will you ever get back into the brick and mortar? Like now that you're in Atlanta, you're planted, will you look at some space here? Uh, If I did, it would only be to purchase. Like I would own the building, which gotcha. I do now. Okay. Yeah. Is that what you do now? What do you mean? Like I own property with event spaces that I rent out to other people. Oh, so you buy the event space. And then now I do. It. Yeah, I buy the buildings and I'll just rent it out to one of my, my clients and event space elites. Got it. All right. So here's the thing. I, I got I to gotta say this. So some people could look at that as mm -hmm. uh, getting out of the <laughs> business just to teach it. And if the business is such a good business. Right. Why are you just going to teach? 100%. It? And that's actually the reason why I didn't do it for a very long time. I made a whole YouTube video on it, on everything. Cause I'm just like, my biggest identity crisis was like, how can I truly teach something that I don't actively do anymore? Mm -hmm. And it just kind of came to a point where I'm just like, I'm sacrificing what I want for what other people think. And that's not wise and fair to me. Because, be, because the thing about it is just like, I'm projecting that other people are looking at it like, oh, well, he doesn't have a vent space business. Like, how can he teach it? When truthfully, that's not the truth because I've already mastered that. I can go farther if I wanted to go farther, but it was an internal choice of mine to stop doing it for something better. It's kind of like when they say like, you know, God has to take something away from you to give you something much better. I just, I didn't even wait for that. I did it for myself. Mm. So I'm like, I'm going to take this away from myself so I can focus it. We did $150,000, $200,000 a month in event spaces. Like people don't do that. You know what I'm saying? So the proof of concept had already been established. I didn't have to prove anything. This is all documented. I didn't have anything else to prove. So for me, it was really just like, I can't keep running the, I wasn't a mature enough entrepreneur at that point to run two, like I'm not Elon Musk. I can't run Tesla, SpaceX. Like I can't do that. I don't have the team. I don't have the bandwidth for that right now. If I really want to see a particular business flourish, I have to do that. And then by running event space elites more so now, I realized that I'm learning at even such a faster pace mm -hmm. because instead of just one venue in New York, I'm learning at the speed of 30 venues at a time across the nationwide. Mm -hmm. So like we have an entire full blown roadmap. Now we have two softwares coming <coughs> out. I literally just got off the meeting with one of my software developers where we're, we're iterating at such a fast pace because we're learning at such a fast pace. Got it. You feel me? I think I was projecting my thoughts or uh, that would be something. Oh yeah, we we, we we gonna get on your thoughts. You've that been active be on social media lately. We, we gonna get on that. I haven't. I've not been any more active than normal. Before we even transition into that, that's a real thing because right now, even from a if it works so well, why'd you quit? Outside of that, the coaching and the consulting space in our in our lane is changing like rapidly. Absolutely. Are you not concerned about not actively running the business to kind of? support the income that you'd be getting from a consulting perspective? Not anymore at all, because the thing, of, so f as an income standpoint or as like a, uh, like a proof of concept fraudulent standpoint? Oh, no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> more from an income standpoint, like people are not buying as many courses. They're not hiring as many coaches because of all the fraud that's happened or scam allegations that's happened. People are- Or not even that. People have, they've paid or, many coaches and, and they realize that they're not, going to do the stuff to the coach and that, to do that's actually the number one thing people have invested in coaching and they're not executing so are you not concerned at all none whatsoever that, that was a, that was probably my least concern because we focus so much on product development like i was just talking to a, a, a close jp uh, we were just we, we was we was talking about it and it was just like most people focus on the marketing of a business instead of focusing on the product not realizing that the product is going to market the business best of all so like That's we real. focus so heavily on product development. Like I study this offer development, like 
Alex Ramosi. Like I study that stuff. And my biggest goal and a lot of things that people tell me about our program is that like we can actually see that you care. Cause I do. Like we 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 we've put in like in explicit guarantees for people that we didn't have to do just because we want to see people win. And it's like, all right, cool. Yeah. We knew your program was three months, but like, you're right there. Let's, let's finish this. Let's do this. You know what I'm saying? Every single thing that goes into our roadmap, every single thing that goes into a software is with our clients in mind. Mm. So I'm not worried at all. And like the only way you cannot succeed in our program is if you just don't do it. Yeah. Like, like, and we've had that. We've had, I'm like, that's the thing. Though. We've people had people like legit it. fall off the map. And like, I would literally call them with my phone and be like, yo, bro, like, where you at? Like, I'm not seeing you. Can you like talk to me on Slack? Like, what's up, bro? And like, that's really the only time. But like, once you're committed, we're committed even more than you. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. people aren't going to stop by people don't, people aren't going to stop needing help. Um, so yeah, if you have a, an amazing product Which and do, yeah. you're going hard at pushing it and I, I think so the product fine. specifically focuses on what? So right now, uh, our mission is basically to help people find fun and fill their events based at $10,000 in sales within 90 days. Mm -hmm. And that's our guarantee now. <clears throat> um, and then we're just relaunching our graduate program now, Scale Your Venue, which is to help you get from 10K to 25K, 50K and onwards Definitely. with your event space. And then once we kind of right now that's like really our only focus right now we're like we're just super we actually did a podcast event david and i um in one of your event spaces in new york yeah i know she told me yeah yeah yeah, yeah, she yeah. Told me you sold it we you know sold that it to her. Yeah. you sold it to her so we do know one of your real students in real yeah. life who actually got an event space mm -hmm. and was actually doing mm -hmm. events and once she i think it was a newer kind of transaction that had recently happened but she is in an area, well, the building itself, the way it's structured, if they really put some elbow grease into that building, she'd have a really, really fly, 100%. like okay. super fly event 100%. space. Mm -hmm. 100%, yeah. When, yeah. And that's like testimonial right there. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing about it. Like we have so much like built up social proof that it's just like any like anybody who even remotely tried to like accuse us of like, like scamming or fraud or anything is just like, Bro, read the room. Like, yeah. where? You know what I'm saying? Like, have you been attacked at all? No, uh, no. no. I had one dude the other day when I so because I was the first one because, like I said, like I had that whole identity crisis. Of like, all right, should I do this? So I, I was the first one to say I sold all my event spaces. Like, you're not about to out me or anything like that. You feel me? Like, I put it on YouTube. I sold all my event spaces, made a video on it, and everything like that. And then one dude, which was funny enough, like he exposed himself because he actually tried to join our program and got denied because we don't approve everybody. And he DM and he like tried to post something on his story. He's just like, look, he's just he's uh. He's He's posting publicly that he's a fraud. I DM'd him so quick. Like, bro, you're not about to play with me, dog. <laughs> Wait a minute. You denied him. So he's ticked off with you. But most people are accepting everybody into Can't their program. That. What's mm -hmm. what's the criteria for someone to not be approved? Yeah, absolutely. So you need, first and foremost, you need, because part of our program is that we help you get the funding. And obviously funding is based on credit. Gotcha. So we have a minimum 650 credit score to join, which is actually going up to 680. Because we, we get like, like I can fund more people than like a f half these funding companies. It's proven we have a whole- Y'all are funding. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, are yeah. you reporting to their credit if they don't? Um, no, we pay? don't, sorry. We don't We don't fund them internally. We like- Have we, a funding partner. Yeah, we re not, not even. We have review their credit report and we give them a personalized assessment. Like, all right, cool. Based on your credit report, you have the highest likelihood of approval of these cards in these banks. So that's what we do. That's so good. is that helping them get business credit? One, business and personal, yeah. Okay. So basically, I say, for example, you join the program, right? Mm -hmm. One of the first things that's in our roadmap is like, hey, Donnie, send me a copy of your credit report from the Experian website, right? Who need a FICO. So what we do is I have my credit specialist. I used to do it, but now I, I have my, my full-time credit specialist who does it for me. And she'll review your entire credit report. We have this full Google sheet that analyzes your credit report. It'll say, it'll look at your utilization, your inquiries, your derogatory marks, your credit score, blah, 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 blah. And then based on all that information, the five factors of credit, it'll say, all right, cool. You have the highest approval odds for the these credit cards and then you just got to go and apply gotcha. like literally last week alone we funded about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. okay mm. okay that's lit so right. this is good it's it's amazing it's amazing yeah, it's amazing i'm not gonna lie just this year better than last year 100 or less 100 uh about two and a half three times better right now really yeah why because you're leaning away from the focus space? and product development yeah. I cut out everything else. One of the signs of an immature entrepreneur is somebody who cannot decide on one thing. And that was me. That's true. I was literally the brokest in my life when I focus on multiple streams of income. And I know that's very, very taboo. Same. 
mean? I know that's very, very taboo. But like, as anybody, we're, we're, I don't even know what camera to look at. But like, anybody who's that one right there, anybody who's watching this video, like, I don't care if you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, if you are trying to make it in life, become world class at one thing. Like, that's the best advice. Like, I know you don't know me. I probably don't know you. But like, that's like the best advice I can possibly yeah. give you right now. I hate that. It, that is so I hate that. It's so cliche. Oh, 100%. You know what I mean? I hate that. Like, it's actually that not is, cliche. It's it not. It is, bro. Like, if you think, hey, focus on one thing, focus on one thing. In the entrepreneurial community, we've heard that, yes? Have you heard that? You've heard? For it, sure. In the entrepreneurial community, we've heard that. Focus on one thing. It's just not common that someone actually does it because right. yeah. we have so many desires and there's so many things we want to do. And I think people take it as, oh, you, th you think I'm... Uh, I can't I'm focus capable. on multiple things, yeah. Well, not even that. So, I mean, when you're when you set out to be an entrepreneur, it's like you have bills. You have real yeah. stuff happening in real time. So you're like, okay, I'm going to run this Turo business while I do Airbnb, but my main focus is this. I hear that all the time, but I agree with you. So though I have multiple streams of income today, I had to get really, 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 really good at being a business coach because I understood that that's what I wanted to do most of. I couldn't just keep piecing stuff together. Yeah. When I was doing all these multiple streams of income, like I won't say that I was the brokest I'd ever been because zero, I, I literally hit that. That was the brokest. <laughs> um, but I definitely never moved out of the phase of thinking about how I'm going to make the next dollar. That focus will change your life. Yeah. So, and I guess uh, multiple streams are helpful. It's just trying to focus on them. All. And I here's what I think. I think that you can become financially successful by doing multiple things. Sure. Um, you'll just be exhausted. And you'll never really reach the potential that part. of where you, where you can go if you put all your energy into one thing. So, mm -hmm. that's cool. All right, so, um, so Atlanta... Are you, you're happy here last two days? <laughs> so far, so good. So far, so good. And what are you hoping that happens in Atlanta? Uh, I just really want to be in more conversations. I really want to be connected with more people who are doing things at a much higher level than me. And New York just wasn't the place for that. Like New York, it was just like, like if you an entrepreneur, you black, you young, it's just like, what are you doing? But there's entrepreneurs in New York. I'm not saying there aren't, just not nearly at the scale of Atlanta. I don't know. I think I think people see what we do on social media like Atlanta has definitely created more of a community of entrepreneurs. Um, and I would definitely say that there are a couple of different cliques of entrepreneurs yeah. in Atlanta. And I don't know if it's like my algorithm because I'm in Atlanta that doesn't show the L.A. community and the, the New York community. But I don't see that anywhere, though we know that it does exist. You want to start a podcast, but you don't know what the heck you're doing. You don't know what you need to buy. You don't know what contracts you need. You don't know how to set up your show. You don't know the concept that you need to have a show on. Listen, we've solved that problem for you. Myself, my mentor, CJ, my partner, Carl Phillips, who's been shooting content for some of the biggest influencers in the world, came together to create the most complete podcasting course that exists, okay? My, my mentor, CJ, he understands business like nobody else. I understand the content creation, podcasting, growth side, okay? Monetization, we both get that. Carl on the technical side, how to shoot, how to edit. We've got a, uh, we've got a session in there talking about the legal side. We have so much information in this course, but listen, I'm not just trying to sell you a course. I wanna sell you a community. When you purchase this very, comprehensive course you're also going to be a part of the community of other podcasters that are on their way to seven figures it's called my seven figure podcast okay www.my7figurepodcast.com. I'm not just trying to sell you a course. I'm not just trying to sell you a community, okay? Every single month, you will talk to me. You will talk to CJ. We will have a conversation answering your questions, whatever we think you need to know. It is a group call once a month that comes with the community, okay? <clears throat> Just remember, my seven figure podcast with a seven, my seven figure podcast.com. Get started right now. If not for nothing, this course is going to change your life, but also you get hand holding once a month. Okay. So go to my seven figure podcast.com.
Yeah, yeah. It was, it's a variety of factors because, well, sorry, excuse me, a combination of factors because the thing about it is just like, like in terms of like bigger cities, like what well, we got New York, we got Miami, we got Atlanta, we got Houston, we got LA, right? And we got Vegas too, right? And then if you think about price point, like, all right, cool. What are the most affordable? Well, Las Vegas is out, LA is out, New York is out. So we have mm. Miami, we have Houston and we have Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Atlanta for me, I knew the most people. So it just made sense for me. Yeah. I don't think Miami has that entrepreneurial culture. Miami has like a that. lot of entrepreneurs. I think it's a lot of entrepreneurs everywhere, but in terms of like the culture of entrepreneurs, like Atlanta, you're in the Uber with somebody, they're gonna tell you about their business. Yeah. It's not right. like that in Miami. Like uh, or think about or, I mean, like you go to Miami, there's like a thousand jet ski companies, thousand car rental companies. Yeah, but that's everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, think about LA. There's a lot of entrepreneurs in LA, but it's not an entrepreneurial theme city where if you're if you're in a networking event everybody's going to tell you about their business that's what the conversation i'll about. tell you this much from living in new york it's a lot easier to start all these different businesses that we just spoke about everywhere else but new york and la i'll tell you that much so that just kind of mm -hmm. goes to show the barrier of entry is much lower for example you cannot do turo in new york unless you have like and don't quote me on this i'm not a turo expert i'm just reading the policy that they said right you can't do turo in new york unless you are like a licensed car dealer you can't do Airbnb in New York unless you own the building. Dang. So that's like two of the biggest side hustles of 2023 Ixnaid yeah. right there off the top. I think Toro and Airbnb was the biggest lick <laughs> well, uh, of recent times. While it lasted. While it lasted. I got a call um, two weeks ago and my man, he said, yo, bro, I mean, uh, he, he called and I, I missed the call and I think he texted me. He's like, yo, I really want, I, I need to holler at you real quick. So I call him back. A couple days later, my, which is what uh, I don't know what it is. Bro. I really need Yo, to holla at you, and you call back. Let me a tell days you. Later. Let me tell you. It's the weirdest thing. Like somebody called me. They'll call me like four days ago, or they send me a text like, "Y'all need to talk to you." And I might miss it and forget about it, but like four days later, I remember. Oh crap! I never hit so and so back, and I'll call. So it's not. Anyway, he calls me, and he was like, "Yo, do you know anybody that does Turo?" And I'm like, no, actually. He's like, yo, I just got, uh, I just got a a parking lot by the airport. We got this service for Turo. Anybody's doing Turo, if they want to drop it off the airport, you could park it there. We'll wash the cars, all that kind of stuff. Oh wow! And I was thinking, yo, that is an awesome idea. Three years ago. <laughs> uh, everybody, everybody's doing Turo. <laughs> I, Three I, I years think, ago, I think there's still uh, there is there. It's not that the company's going away, right. but the hype of it is it's gone. Right? Even when you said, "Yo, I moving, to, I moved to Atlanta," and I was thinking to myself, "It is going to be a better entrepreneurial scene." But if you're watching this, don't move to Atlanta because of what you saw over the last couple of years, because it's different. It is. If, if, if I'm being super honest, man, I, I know dozens of entrepreneurs in Atlanta that, uh, that aren't doing what they were doing over the last couple of years. And here's one of my signs. When they start promoting credit repair, I'm like, yo, you fell off. I, I don't know why that wait, is. Wait, wait, what? Yeah, no, yo, it's it's the craziest thing. You were doing one thing, and now you're promoting. I'll fix your credit. Who's it almost that? seems like I don't know. It almost seems I like mean, I'm the, about to drop a software, but so let me tell. Let me for tell, credit repair. Yeah. It was it was, it was a younger. It was a young lady. Apparently, I'm, 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 I bro. <laughs> no, I no, no. The road. I, it was a young lady. It was a young lady. It, it's almost feels like the uh, <laughs> the brother to coat factory for. Entrepreneurs, <laughs> where entrepreneurs go to die. <laughs> so here's the thing. No. This girl told, and this was me being honest, and maybe it's my, it's just me. So oh, yeah, you've like, been Yo, on one lately. I've been wanting, to, I've been wanting to go. All right, we'll talk about. You want to talk about so bad? Uh, I was. She was like, "Y'all been wanting to come on the podcast," and I told her honestly, last year I saw you promoting that you could fix people's credit, but that wasn't what you were doing. A couple of years ago, like you are this person that's doing this particular thing. And then I saw you promoting credit repair and I'm like, oh, you're pivoting because it seems like that thing doesn't work. And now I'm going to fix people's credit. 
It just see. I don't know. I want to know who it I is. I could be wrong. So do I. I could be wrong. It's but wild I, 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 stuff. I, 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 told, I told the person. Side text me. No, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. David's been on one. What you mean, B? Oh, no. Just the, his his recent encounters with uh, budding entrepreneurs have been very, very oh, the transparent. Fire, the hot seat. Oh, that's what it is? The hot seat. Hot I'm not going to lie. I was like low-key worried. I was like, you going to put me in one of those? But like, I was prepared. Like, I'm, I'm ready. Like, I'm ready. <laughs> Let me go through the checklist you know, before I show I'll bring out P&Ls. Like, let's do this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, I just I was definitely surprised when I like I saw the first one where the dude had like the production company mm -hmm. and I commented, I'm just like, yo, this is a different side of Shans. <laughs> and I'm just like, yo, why is he talking to people like this? Crazy. I'm um, like, bro, like you really like 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 grilling them to, like yeah. this is like some New York behavior. Like <laughs> he's really and then when I saw the one with the business consultant, my jaw dropped. Bro. Who was the business consultant? When he's like, nah. doesn't that make you a fraud i'm like <laughs> bro i lost it i mean like i i didn't disagree with you but i was like on public television but you know they know what they're signing up for when they come on that that okay. segment oh yeah. so it's like a thing it's it wasn't impromptu. what's your thoughts though what are your th what like what are, what were you thinking on on the segment or like on those two particular the people the segment about me what were you thinking you know me and you're like yo this is Surprising. I mean, I do know that you are like you, you, you know BS. Like I get that. You know what I'm saying? As you should be. Like I don't like anybody really sugarcoating nothing with me. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? But just I guess to see it so on the big screen yeah. was like, wow, that's crazy. And then of course I don't know how no I don't know how well you know these people. <laughs> so I'm just like, bro, like he's really <laughs> ripping them apart right now. This is crazy. <laughs> so I was I was like, I was I was surprised, but I'm just like in I was like, some people really do need to hear this because they're selling themselves a lie every single day just yeah, to wake up in yeah. the morning. That's so it's true. like, if this is the way you need to learn and this is the way you need to hear it, so be it. Because clearly you could not self-identify. Yeah. yeah. You got a mic? You got a mic? So so mic was on. Okay. And, oh, him? Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, shoot, bro. Yeah, so not, Speak your truth. I want to I I hear, hear your perspective. Speak your truth, happening. King. Uh, no, I mean, listen, it's, it's uncomfortable truths. Mm. But it it lights a fire. Under so first and foremost, I'm sorry to, yeah. to cut you off. What was the assessment? Just like to reset the room. For for myself, it was you just one. Um, you've been inconsistent. Like it, it was a a very honest conversation about my addiction to inconsistency. And here's a great thing that Dave has not said. I'm not going to spill all the secret sauce, mm. but he said he enjoys actually to a certain degree being a bad guy. Because people did come to my defense. I've met people out who are like, oh, I saw, nah, he, man, you ain't been inconsistent. I've been seeing you, did like, right? So they, they, it allowed for, for interest. So it drove, it drove traffic to, to me. It also just reinforced, like, these are some blind spots. Or these are some spaces that you're just being inauthentic. You're not being honest. Mm. Um, and offline, it's, it's encouragement. It's like, yo, man, I, man, you, he was before we had that conversation, man, you're going to be successful because we were having a very in-depth conversation about my business. And he was just like, your convictions are going to carry you to success. So it's a little made for TV, which yeah. is great, but it also is, I want to ruffle your feathers. I want to provoke you because if you're not thinking through these things, somebody else who does not have the best intentions could come for you, and now you're really going to be in a bad space. What happens when a YouTuber wants to break down your business and talk about how you're a fraud because you sold all your your buildings, right? Yeah. Like, oh yeah, me. One person that I trust hit me with all those already, so I can hit you from A to Z, and then back from Z to A, one, two, three, four, and let's see what you have to say there. Mm, man, so man. it was for me. It was it was a, a powerful space, and because of him. I, him and, and some other factors, I ended up having my best month right after. Oh, right God. After that. Really? He's it's not up. a bad guy, man. What are your thoughts when you saw him? I love them. You know I love I them. Know. You know that's my style all day. I love them. And I love them not because it appears to be an attack on entrepreneurs. I love them because I think it will really, I know, um, because the direct approach is like my style. I know that it will actually produce more successful entrepreneurs because most people are used to 
being coddled or being given like just head nods like, yep, I get it. I understand. And then those same people go and talk about them to somebody else behind their backs. Like Mm -hmm. nobody is giving real direct transparent advice to people because you're so afraid to hurt their feelings or because you're going to people who are unqualified to really give you advice about your business. I think that approach is great. I think also that being that quick forces entrepreneurs to understand, you know what? I do need to think through these things. I think that those kind of conversations in the hot seat like that are also going to have people being more intentional about creating programs that are not full of fluff Mm -hmm. or creating offers and business models that are not full of fluff. I love it. Good. good. What's up with you? Yeah, I, I have a question for you. How much of what David said were things that you had already thought of, but you never had anyone ask you those questions? Give him the mic. Oh, okay. for, uh, for me, it was, this was more of a, almost a, like a life coaching <sighs> session. So there were internal, you know, internal conversations that I had, I had had, um, but you need some to me i'm i'm that same same person like give it to me straight i may want to fight you did you want to fight him no i mean well we had we had, had <laughs> yo david, david tensed up he's like no did, no, we, no 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 was there ever a moment that you wanted to be like yo he playing with me right now <laughs> no because here's the thing i think that at some point what you should do is record those the preview conversations and 10 years later like right after we've Right. After you've already been there, to have some of these breakdown conversations of why why we get there. Because what he's doing in pre-production is assessing certain things. And then his mind is working to say, okay, here's where I'm going to touch. Here, here's the touch point. So when I was talking about what I offer, he was like... I. I felt like he was like, I can't really come from, from here. He knows what he's talking about here. And this is going to not be as as confrontational and conversational and entertaining as if we have this other space where I can actually help him one, but two, poke some buttons that are going to make him uncomfortable. And anytime somebody wants to like be combative, to me, there's some level of disillusionment from what we talked about yeah. earlier today, or you are afraid of being exposed or you just don't know. And so that exposure, that light can be something that then creates discomfort and you have that fight, flight, or freeze response. Yeah, I think the what, what you said is kind of reaction that I'm looking for. Like, well, I well, want you, one? when you was like, yo, he is on one. You oh, might have yeah. sent it to somebody or said something to somebody else. Like, yo, you seen this? And that's the goal, right? There was a, uh, shout out to Jan. She said her and her friends were sitting around. She was like, she was she was going back and forth with her friends. Some of them think they're paid actors, like or or the whole thing is staged. Because like, oh, why would somebody talk to somebody like that, right? But I'm looking at the I'm looking at the trends of what's happening. There was a period where um, we will watch fight videos or gossip stuff, and then the world kind of transitioned into motivation. It wasn't always motivational quotes on our timeline on Twitter, let's say. It wasn't always like that. But around the 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, we see motivation and inspiration. This is what we're sharing with each other. And then we got more information now, right? So now we have the people that are making the parodies of the the podcast (laughs) entrepreneurs saying, okay, so first all you gotta do is go get a monkey. You get that monkey, you sell the monkey, okay? You buy the monkey back. I wanna make one of those so bad. (laughs) Right. But it's only it's only something you want to make because it's our reality right now. And that's what's trending. But what I'm seeing now is information and motivation isn't going to be the next wave. I think the the next wave is reality and transparency. Mm. Lifestyle marketing isn't as. as hailed or looked at like, oh, I want to, people aren't doing lifestyle marketing as much because it's not what sells. You'll see a lot of super successful entrepreneurs being more real and more transparent now. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're pivoting to. Do you, do you see what I'm saying in that way? I mean, I definitely, cause like the whole, like, you know, scam culture coming up, I think it definitely pushed that, that narrative because now it's just like people are 
on the fence about all these different gurus and coaches and stuff like that. So they're looking for real. So that's just going to be like, people are going to look for a lot more upfront value. Yeah. Now, like when I, like when I dropped my entire course for free on YouTube, it came at like the perfect time, the perfect time. Cause like all that stuff would like, I mean, I, I don't even want to drop no names, but like a whole lot of like expose was coming out. So mm -hmm. like when I put that, I'm just like, I mean, I don't even need like, this is the same stuff I used to sell for two bands here. Everybody's just like, Oh, and like when I'm getting so many testimonials from it, it just kind of pushed the narrative. Like, all right, cool. People really want to build with somebody who's real and who's really doing it. What was your strategy behind doing that, dropping your course for free? Yeah. So, I mean, the biggest thing is just like I wanted to build trust. So, like, I wanted people to know very, very quickly that I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So, it's like I wanted to give away the information and just really just focus on the implementation. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, it's just like I'm not selling you. You need this. At least that's what you tell yourself. Yeah. Because at that point, you have the information. You want to go do it yourself, do it yourself. Like, I'm not going to tell you how long it's going to take or whatever the case may be, because that's on you. But now it's like, you know, based on the information, that this is going to be way past your element. We're the experts that can help you get it done a lot quicker. So yeah. that was really the rationale just to kind of like build that trust, show that authority. Mm -hmm. And it, it worked like a charm. Are you looking at it from a... I don't like... I don't want to know if the word rebranding is... a. Uh, uh, a proper fit for what I'm trying to say, but in terms of you, you creating a different narrative about who you are over time, do you feel that's important at all? Uh, I, th to an extent, um, I feel like, do I feel like that's important? Um, if necessary, if it's not that, like, I don't feel like I have to rebrand myself. Like I'm still Brian Waldron, billionaire B kid from New York. Like I don't feel the need to rebrand. Like nothing happened in my life for me to need to rebrand myself. Yeah. If that happens unintentionally by some business change or whatever, then okay. Because like by me selling all my event spaces that in a way kind of like rebrands myself in a way because now it's like, all right, cool. He's a coach. He's not really an event space owner, which mm -hmm. I mean, technically I'm, I guess I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Have I helped hundreds of other people do it? 100%. Mm -hmm. So I guess in a way that was like an unintentional rebrand, but like, I don't feel me personally, like I have to do that right now. There's, there's really no need. What you do know? you think on rebranding? I don't think uh rebranding is necessary. I think this is just the evolution of his business model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, you grow as an entrepreneur. And I mean, to an extent, that is a rebranding itself. Like you said, like, some people, like, their stuff hits the fan and they right. go back into credit repair. You know what I'm saying? That, like, that's a rebrand, but yeah. just obviously in the wrong direction. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Just obviously in the wrong direction. Right. But as opposed to, like, you, like, I might, you know, I might eventually sell events, basically. Who knows? And I might focus on helping people become coaches. Who knows? You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? That's a rebrand in itself. But the way I look at it is just I'm just growing as an entrepreneur. This this chapter of my life is over. Yeah. Like, I'm, I, I don't live in New York anymore. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm not a I, New Yorker. I think I look at it as um, there, I, I think people want an upgraded version or something to get people to talk again. So if we think about how many times have Diddy rebranded, he renamed himself. A couple you know times. I mean? Puff so, Daddy. Oh, for P. sure. He Diddy, Diddy. He's love now. Love. Puff. Drake, he pushed the envelope, right? So he, you know, making this uh, rap, 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 but then he dropped the album of the whole little disco techno type mm -hmm. situation. And now he's back with a whole nother blend and he's, he's braiding his hair now, half braided, half unbraided, bigger clothes. Like it's a whole nother look, two chains. He went from titty boy, titty boy. Yeah. It's, he had a butt, uh, hair weave killer. Mm -hmm. All that. I think in, in, in every time he does it, two chains specifically, every time he does it, it keeps him relevant. So I think Titty Boy, I mean, Titty Boy, that was Futures. I mean, um, 2 Chains is very first name, by the way. But I think that he is the only one that you mentioned that has actually gone through a rebrand, maybe even Diddy. But I think Drake um, is just evolving into who he is or I who agree. he wants to be. I think evolving is a good word for yeah. it. But I, I still agree. think evolve it, just letting people know that you are still here and you're evolving. Because it's easy to keep doing the same thing and you're growing, but from the outside, people don't see that anything's different than what you were doing last year. Yeah, Might've been making more money, you might be, but I, for me, I'm always trying to uh, stay, I wanna be fresh. I don't want people to, I don't want people to think 
that they know my next move and I'm doing the same thing all the time. I don't know that that's a rebrand though. So Two Chains, for example, he was Titty Boy when he was a dope boy mm -hmm. out here in these streets. And then when he started to like, he started rapping as Titty Boy, but then when he started to like move out of the, the dope industry and really moved into music and now becoming a family man, it became Two Chains. Diddy had to go from Puff Daddy to all these things because he established like a really bad reputation, you know, from a business perspective. So he sat out a minute and then he came back as somebody different. So when he did that, it's like, OK, what's changed? Is he a better businessman or are people, you know, experiencing better, better experiences with him? It's kind of that with you or Drake or somebody else. We're looking for these small changes in how the current thing keeps getting better. Not different. Yes, yes, I agree. I mean, it could be different, though. I don't know if it's di like Diddy is different. He's not producing records like that. He's not bad boy records. Like he was synonymous sure. with like bad boy records, right? Mm -hmm. Titty Boy was synonymous with a dope boy who rapped. Mm -hmm. They made very, they, be, they became very different people and made very different changes. Um, it's like David will need to rebrand if David is coming out now and all you're wearing are suits and you've dyed your hair blonde, like be over here. And you know, you're speaking, hair, so you're speaking very style. differently or <laughs> I mean, you could add hair anyway. Those things would be like a rebrand. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe rebrand again, maybe rebrand isn't the right word, but I think we got to pop out and be doing something that makes people say, yo, y'all saw what B was doing. And maybe, not, I mean, Jay-Z, right? You go from rapping about drugs and then he becomes this playboy player, right? I got I got all this money. And then he becomes conscious. Wolf conscious, it's, yeah. He definitely yeah, rebranded. Sure. Yeah, Him, his, Jay Z was a mixture of rebrand and evolution. Yeah. And that's that's like when you start changing, like at one point he's like, I'm done with this rap thing. I'm a businessman. Like I yeah. am the business man. Like he yeah. went from the dope boy to the rapper, to the husband, the father, the businessman. So I think a lot of what he's done too, you know, and, and Jay went from t-shirts down to his knees to suits. And now he's back to like uh, sweatpants. It's and, more of, <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> for sure. Grew his hair out. Mm -hmm. In terms of how do you see your brand? You know what I mean? Like, do, I, do you see yourself doing anything that's wowing your audience? right now or do you feel like that's not important i do feel like it's important because like donnie said like you certain it's like and i feel like we're all kind of saying the same thing there are some people who rebrand because they have to mm -hmm. bad stigma whatever the case may be there are some people who they just evolve you know what i'm saying which is why i was saying before like i never intentionally rebranded i evolved as an entrepreneur i got more mature i realized that certain things are more important than other things you know what i'm saying i'm in a relationship now you know what i'm saying like all these different things change you as a person as a human being as a man so like i never looked at it like Ah oh, man, offense face. I'm not really trying to do that no more. Man, I'm going into this. Like I know it was that. It was just me growing as an entrepreneur and seeing what's important. But you know, you can if you want to. If you want to say event spaces, I don't want to do it anymore. Like and I, I could, think yeah. as humans who are entrepreneurs, we have the right to change our mind 100%, without 100%. it requiring this big explanation. Now, just because you changed your mind and say, I don't want to be, I don't want to be responsible for brick and mortars. Uh, event spaces anymore it doesn't mean that for somebody else who is in the position where they want one it's not still a great idea you're in that space where you want one I've grown I've evolved I no longer want to own the event space but I know the framework for it so I'll teach you how to do it okay. that's the space that I'm in right now and I think sometimes in the world of entrepreneurship um, versus consumers it looks like well if you're not doing it then it must not work no I've I did it and I did it well and I don't want to do it anymore mm -hmm. but I know how to do it and what I'd rather do at this point is teach a whole bunch of people how to do it and it's 100 percent okay for me to get wealth gain wealth doing that because that's just where I am right now mm -hmm. and in five years you might say I really miss having these event spaces I, might, I really yeah. miss that mm -hmm. energy and you might come back to it it doesn't mean that something is wrong. It just means that as you evolve, your interests are changing. And the beauty about entrepreneurship and the way it looks today is that we're really building businesses that don't need to be highly committal. You, you're committed to it for as long as you want to. Yeah. I, I think that it's important that 
this isn't like coach. I don't know because you're you're a successful entrepreneur, but I think Appreciate it's important it. to push the push the growth or push the narrative, right. like how people need to see. You. So until today, I didn't know you were going in that space, and maybe I'm not on social media like that. But I think it for the people that are listening, it takes a committed effort to show the world who I want you to recognize me as right now. So I think Neil does a great job right now. You'll see, he used to do marketing, 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 tip, 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 bar, 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 bar. And now he's doing a lot of pictures with him and his family, him and his wife. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of it now, yeah, right? I mean, just to kind of like, like kind of stem off of that, like a lot, a, a big thing that I do now is like I do, I don't know if you ever see those videos where like people like, you know, like kind of like hand out money or buy gifts or something like that. I started doing a lot more of those, but that's, it wasn't for like a self-indulgent perspective. It was more so like, this is just what I want to do now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because like I realized that I have my business page and like if you into that, then you go over there. You know what I'm saying? This is my personal brand. This is my personal page. And I'm going to talk about what's important to me. So like, for example, like I want to show people, like one of the biggest things for me was that like everybody shows their wealth differently. Like you said, lifestyle marketing might not be a thing. Like for me, like I'm not big bust down chain, ironically, but like I'm not big, like bust down chains, Lamborghini, Lamborghinis, like, you know, all the women bottle popping. Like I don't do that stuff. And if I did that and I showed that on Instagram, I'd be lying to you. I just don't do that. I enjoy, you know, like spreading my wealth and helping other people. Like for example, like before I moved to Atlanta, like I gave this one girl like like a whole bunch of like stuff for her e-commerce business because I met her at a fair. And I'm just like, I think this would help you. Like I gave her like a whole bunch of like wrapping paper and like packaging. Cause I'm just like, like I want to see you grow. And like, I literally like coached her for free for like an hour, like just yeah. standing there. But I'm just like, that's important to me because I like, I remember when I was a 22 year old entrepreneur and I had nobody. Like I would literally call people and they would just be like, I'm sorry, I don't want to give up my secrets. And that hurt me. Mm -hmm. So like if I can help other people in whichever way I can, obviously I have to make a living too. And, mm -hmm. but like, if I can give out as much information as possible and then like, you know, there are people who want more information, that's cool. But if I could just like that, like that's my part in the world. Yeah. So like, for example, I went to Columbia, I gave a waitress a thousand dollar tip, you know, I went into, you know, my, my bed, bed style where, you know, uh, close you to need some water B? I got one. I'm, Cause I can serve if you're giving out thousand dollar tips. You want? Oh, you feel me? <laughs> I mean, your your <laughs> thirst is my pleasure. Um, <laughs> I, I started looking on the corners of my like, does he, is he look at like your thirst out? is my pleasure. <laughs> but and then was, my cash app is. I'm dead. I'm dead. But it's just like you know what I'm saying. Like the cool thing about money is, is that it you can really have impact with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm going to be completely honest. Like a thousand dollar tip is like, it's not going to make or break me. Like, like respectfully, it's not. But in Colombia, that's a three month salary. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like she literally cried. And I'm just like, bro, that's so dope that I've been able to work hard enough to be able to do something like that and not kill myself. Like, I don't got to worry about paying rent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I did that, you know? Yeah. I went to Bedford Stuyvesant. I literally, I met a dude, he was selling water. You know, it was, it, I, I bought him a pair of sneakers right then and there. I'm just like, bro, like you stand on your feet all day? Here, here's a fresh pair of sneakers. Went back, bought out all his water, sent him home. I was like, bro, how much water you got? He's like, probably like 200 bucks worth. Boom, did it, hand them out to the city. Boom, 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 boom. Like that stuff is dope to me. Yeah, like, you're, I, but you're doing it because you just want to do it, right? I do it because I want to do it. And right. I like, I love to see other entrepreneurs win. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm not trying to like, you know, like, sell nobody or nothing like that but like you know anybody could like kind of like you know sit down hold up a cup and stuff like that like you know if you do what you got to do you feel what i'm saying mm -hmm. but like somebody who's really out here trying and they just really need like a little leg up like i, I rock with you for that yeah. you're committed and i'm committed to you for that yeah. you feel what i'm saying i like that and if i can help you in any which way i can i'm gonna help you yeah, yeah. I, I mean i think that we have to so here's the thing. I love that. And it's beautiful. Right. I think especially amongst three of us, we're all silently always doing something really dope. But I don't want people to feel like that they have to do that. Right. I don't want people to feel like they owe the world to do X, Not Y, and Z all. in that way, like the thousand dollar tips and buying the shoes. And I, I think that once we make a certain once we create a, a certain level of abundance, meaning extra more than enough. I think it's all our responsibilities to contribute in some way, but the way that contribution looks could be very different for yeah. everybody. 100%. 100%. Uh, I think uh, the, the way I'm like even seeing this conversation is, I guess my question is how important is it to push the narrative of who you are doing these things intentionally, not saying, okay, I'm gonna get this person a thousand dollars, but Hey, turn the camera on first. But 
the way I'm seeing my my brand is what can I do or what can I create? What type of campaign can I create to paint a picture in people's minds about who I am? If my thing is I want to become more philanthropic, I might be at a a drive through and every time I'm at a drive through, I'm going to record myself saying, I don't know, hey, how much is the person behind me? Let me pay. And I start pushing this That's narrative <laughs> of everybody should do this. Mm -hmm. Right. And when people start to see me, they're like, oh, that's the guy that does this particular thing, right? So right now I'm just in a season of, I want to have real transparent conversations because quite honestly, bro, I hate the way I post on social media right now. Mm. It's a We're gonna take a cool clip out of this interview and we're gonna post it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, just, I, I just don't like it anymore, it's not, it's what everybody's doing. We're trying to create something that inspires or motivates and educates. And we're hoping that other people are going to share it and engage with it. Yeah. And I hate it. There has to be something else, but I do know that something else is coming. Like these clips of you just posting something cool or inspirational is going to go out the window and it's going to make it harder. There's a wave of you become popular by doing all the dancing and the trends and stuff like that. I think it's still a thing right now. I'm always thinking from a branding perspective, how can I do something that's going to be an announcement, but not just one time, but create a campaign around it? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm helping podcasters and I tell people, I'll do a coaching session, but it's only about podcasting and it has to be in the studio. I'm not doing it Zoom. So it's not about the money, but all of the things that I'm, I look at it as a board and I wrote it down, I said, okay, podcast king, what are the things that have to be created to make this true? And what are the narratives that have to create? So that's from a branding perspective. I don't think, I think we just do what we do, but we're not thinking what is the picture that we can paint in the minds of other people about what we do through some sort of consistent campaign mm -hmm. or action. So are you saying also, like if it's truly who you are to tip the waitress a thousand dollars or do X, Y, and Z, um, it's okay to post that kind of stuff on social. Yeah, I think it's okay or not okay. I'm just saying, if you want to build a brand, you need to be intentional about this being a a movement or a wave, mm -hmm. not just I did it today. Yeah, right. Like yo, know, every time I do. Right. All right, y'all. I'm in line again at the at the basketball game. Uh, what y'all think? Should I pay for the person in front of me or behind me? No. And that's the thing that I do. And I guarantee you, if you do that uh, often enough, people will see you at a game and say, no, I want to be behind you. <laughs> the Dorito Dave thing, bro. Every every single speaking gig I got over those two year periods, they gave me the check. I take the check, but it always came with a bag of Doritos mm -hmm. because that's the narrative that I pushed. Some people like it, some people don't. You like so Doritos? I, huh? You like Doritos? You know, I was I love Doritos, first off. You know what stopped me from doing that? I saw What the Health and I went vegan for like three days. And I was like, <laughs> I can't eat, I can't eat this garbage. <laughs> Yo. And then I tried to do it with like some vegan snacks. It wasn't the same that I lost my momentum. So I thought Three days. Doritos, one of the flavors fit into a vegan diet. One of the flavors. I saw what the hell. First off, you can't eat none of that stuff. That's a fact. Because it still I got that no diphosphate, chlorine, and dana, yeah, yeah, dana yeah, yeah, in it. Yeah, it got the red 40. <laughs> it got the red, it got red dot number 25. Red, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what, the red 40 is a something. My wife don't want to give our kids at like, all. It's like fruit punch and all. Yeah, no. It got red 40. Can't do it. Yeah. Can't do it whatsoever. But yeah, kill my momentum. I too am, um, I too hate the way that I'm posting on social media right now. So let me tell you really what I'm like, what I'm not liking. Talk to me. I am, there are, <laughs> so I too am not liking the way I'm posting on social media right now and I am in this space like I'm constantly in the space of what's the new thing that I can do so like I had gotten into this space where all I wore was athleisure wear and you saw me very casual you see me in hoodies like in the winter you're gonna see me in hoodies all winter but when the spring and summers pop out I'm back to like that's where I thrive that's where my fashion sense thrives so as you, it was funny is as you get these new followers throughout the winter, then when the summer comes, everybody thinks like, oh, she must have done X, Y, and Z because Donnie's popping out now, right? And I'm like, no, nah, you're just new here. <laughs> what I am, not, what I'm experiencing now, there's there's two people specifically who are like duping my life, right? And ah, who? 
I'm not. You know who. I know. You told you know me, who. Man. You saw when it. When you say dupe of your life, what do you mean exactly? Yo, I got two people on me heavy. Every move I make, they're right behind me, right? Doing, doing the exact same stuff down to calling themselves and speaking publicly about themselves in the exact language that I speak about myself down to taking some of my brand names. Like I could push a trademark situation if I want to, Got but to. I'm just trying not to be what, What's the petty, name that right? somebody took? Not going to go there, but I got, so. <laughs> I, got, I got an IP attorney if you need. Yeah, well, maybe. I think I have one. Okay. Um, so the thing is, instead of me being petty and saying, uh-uh-uh, cease and desist, I'm just like, okay, what now can I create or do for you to copy? Because you're going to keep. So there are people who really, and it's not just me, they look to, and this is why when I'm coaching or when I'm teaching, it's really about discovering your authentic gifts. Because it's one thing to be, I'm flattered when someone is inspired by me that actually is qualified to go and do what I do. Mm -hmm. But when you ain't qualified and you're just taking like, the front page view of what I do and you're trying to do it too, that's not, I'm not flattered by that. Do you say something? Hold on, pause it. Do you think she should say something to the people that are stealing everything she does? What do you think? Uh, I mean, if it's clearly noticeable, yeah, I, I would address it. Is it clearly noticeable, Dave? I didn't notice it until you said it. Until you said something, because I don't pay attention to those two people. Is it cease once, and desist once worthy? I, once I brought it to your attention, once I brought it to your attention, is it clearly noticeable? Yeah. Not is it cease and desist worthy? Oh, well, all right. No, no. It's not even, that's, let's take that off the table, right? Okay. Because I'm not going to issue a cease and desist. The issue is having to, or, or the conversation is having to constantly reinvent yourself. You got these people on your, on your feet, but the people that I'm specifically talking about are not qualified to copy me. There's some of y'all who are qualified to copy me and do it because mm. if I'm inspiring you and you have the skill set, I don't mind it. Just, you know, shout me out, give me credit. But there are a couple of people who had nothing else going on for themselves. And in order to create an identity, they have attached themselves to me. No, nah, I leave it alone. Leave it alone? I, Don't I say anything? No, nah, I leave it alone. It just It's like, all right, cool. Like, it's like every time I say, oh yeah, y'all, I'm this. Two posts later, they that too. Every time I wear a different sneaker, two weeks later, they're wearing that sneaker too. Every time I... Uh, talk about doing X, Y, and Z in my business. They're doing it too. You think it's a coincidence? Could be. You think it's a coincidence? I don't. I don't. I don't know. In this situation, maybe you inspire people. Like, why wouldn't they want to do what you're doing? And that, come on. Like, yeah. I don't. I don't think it's. Here's the thing. No, 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 no. Hold on. Yes, I inspire people, and yes, I love inspiring people. Like, my life is literally. I am the voice of hope. I want to inspire you. I want you to do what I do if you're qualified to do it. But wearing your hair like me, dressing like me, like completely changing how you wear your hair to wear your hair like me, completely changing how you dress to dress like me, starting a business that you ain't ever been in and you're not qualified to be in because I do it. Like that's not flattering. Yeah. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Sure. No, it's not. No, it's not. I think I, I think mean, so. No, so imitation is sometimes imitation you're is worth cold, imitating. Is, that's true. But sometimes imitation is annoying. And it's like, you know, if you imitate a piece of it, cool. If you copy a piece of it, cool. But it's like every freaking move I make. Are y'all going to let up? Donnie, this is the cost of fame. Yeah. Like, I'm not fame. This and is, you not fame. Be this is the cost of fame. And you teach people what it is You are in the social that you do. podcast. I teach people what it is that I do. But the difference is I actually train and develop people to do it in a way that is authentic to them. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about all the other people who want to be coaches and they're inspired by me and they're using the type of systems that I'm using and they're using, they're, they're copying my funnels. I don't care about that. That's business. I am talking about people who are literally changing everything about them and they're becoming little Donnie's. That's not flattery to me. It's, creepy <laughs> i mean even if you do change what you got going on they're just gonna copy that too so you may as well just like but i feel listen. like now i gotta make it like it, it gotta be bigger and it gotta be harder to duplicate that's the thing it gotta be bigger and harder that's to duplicate thing. that's what I'm, yeah i 100 that whole hot seat concept someone's taking that 
I'm taking for it. sure. Can I can Dude. I be on the next one? You want to? No, no, no. I don't want to be a guest. I want to be like, oh. Like, no, 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 no. I don't want to be a guest. Let me clear that up. I don't want to be a change guest. Let's change the state. Let's go down the road. I am creative with these questions, bro. It's no, 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 no. I, I want it to be like, I want it to be in the in the interviewer seat, co-interviewer yeah, you know what seat. I was, actually, I was thinking about like just having like different guests, uh, people doing it. But uh, for right now, I'm just going. I feel you. Up. I feel you. You're establishing it. I feel yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know, I know somebody's going to take it. One, it's just too easy to do. It's attractive 100% mm -hmm. and um, like it's not like I. it's just I just have I low key, I low key want to try it for a I, vibe I, like, I bro, give credit but I expect it I expect it but that does put a fire under me and say okay I gotta keep Iterating. I gotta keep like yeah. like building this thing because uh, somebody's gonna take the idea and run with it and it's gonna be on TV do you have so. um, have you experienced anybody like speaking like you dressing like you yeah my whole career. You see, sure. you see this man? One person, Swag. every single thing. You, you know, 100%. one person. And they join every program that I'm in. They comment and on they everything. Yeah. But did I, they copy like everything? It. They try. You liked it? Yes. Dave, I have heard you complain before. When? I, I can't tell you exactly when, yeah, but I have I, for sure, for sure, for sure heard you say something. It's not flattering. No, I, it, I, I wouldn't call it flattering, but... Do I care? No. Yo, if, yo, I I tell people on the morning meetup, if I say something that you really, really like, repost it, put in your own words. That's very different. So I'm I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. I'm not I'm not talking about that kind of stuff at all. I'm I'm talking you have to I'd have to actually call these people out for you to understand what I'm talking about. And I'm not doing that for clarity. I am not talking about people who are simply inspired by you and they're just doing things and you inspire them they so much. Be you. I'm talking about people who are one of them specifically is dangerously trying to live my life. Yeah. The other one is just. Let them try. It's going to be impossible. <laughs> it's going to be impossible. It's cute. It, it is. And I get that. I'm speaking on it today saying it's annoying. It really is annoying. Say so to it. I just did. It's annoying because I know you're watching it. You're looking for something else to talk about. They're going to be wearing these two next. <laughs> nice shoes. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Well. That's Donnie's um, petty moment for the day. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In uh, your, I guess, this is this, are you going to go through a rebranding or are you just doing something different? In terms of? Because you were saying, this is my event space, this is how I make money. Right. Your conversation now isn't. I was in event space brick and mortar for five years. Mm -hmm. So that's the conversation. I, I've, I did that part already. Yeah. Let me show you how to do what I've done, yeah. not what I'm doing necessarily. Right. Yeah. And I have, if anybody doesn't believe me, look at my track record. But do you think it's important to intentionally make this transition in the eyes of people? Uh, I, mm -hmm. think it's, I think it's important to intentionally disclose it. Yeah, for sure. But nobody's going to I mean, most people aren't going to see the disclosure. Like you said, you gave away your course. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it. Is that but still available? Yeah. For free? 100%. Tell people where to get it. Go on YouTube, this YouTube Billionaire, which can't, oh, this one. You can go on YouTube, YouTube Billionaire B. There's an entire free event space and throw rental course free of charge. You don't even have to opt in. Go right ahead. Hey, Kay, grab that joint for our space. Get it, Dave. Go right ahead. Bree, grab um, it. And, uh, we're about to buy another building. In the link. <laughs> But I, I think just unsolicited advice. Is that how you say it? Unsolicited? Unsolicited yeah. is a word. Can you spell it real um, quick? Yeah. <laughs> U-N-S-O-C. Nope. All right. Solicited? You yeah, do it one more time. No, don't tell them. Don't tell them. S-O-L-I-C-T. No. What? So I forget that. <laughs> right, uh, At least I, you can say unsolicited it advice. I think if you're moving into this new space, and again, I'm not a branding expert, just my boy talking to my boy. Um, I think you need to come up with a strategy to intentionally show people this is who you are now. Mm, how would I do that? Um, I I mean, if you're going to create a campaign of going to different event spaces. Or like, yo, Marcus Limonis, we never seen him talk about his own business. Camping anymore. World? Huh? Camping World? No, Marcus Limonis, you know what I'm talking about? The Prophet? Yeah, that's his business, Camping World. We don't, I, and I seen mad episodes, never saw it. But what he did was he went to all these other businesses. The Prophet, and yeah. And I became 
I became a fan of him being the person that goes to fix other people's businesses. Right. He, clear, he clearly knows what he's talking about. Yeah. He's breaking down the numbers. He's going. He's restructuring employees, all that kind of stuff. But I do that. I think, right. I but, do that. But intentionally saying this is the campaign that I'm on. So that's, the, that's my point, I guess. We need to, as entrepreneurs, especially with branding, we need to go on certain campaigns where you can identify me with this particular action that I'm doing mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Mm, like okay. you're the person that walks up to every event space. It's not open right now, or I'm looking through, all right, so this is what I see about this event space. And you know that I'm the coach. I'm never in my own event space saying, these are the floors that I use. Right. But you can go and identify everybody else's floor. Oh, that's going to be about $3 a square. So I guess in a way I am doing that mm -hmm. because for every client of ours that opens up a space, we personally go out there and I do exactly what you just yeah. mentioned. So I have about three videos up already that do exactly that. And then going forward, every single client that opens up a space, like I just had a, a client open one up in Detroit, Michigan, I'm going to be going out there. So we do intentionally we'll do that. a hundred of them. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm saying if you are intentional about this being a campaign, not it's because you just do what you do. Right. You're good at it, right? But if you get your team together and say, all right, y'all, this is what we, like we have mad conversations. Like I, I just, I don't want to do it, but I've talked about it. I want to go out and talk to homeless people about entrepreneurship. Mm. But when I sit them down, it's not like, let's go out one day. It's, yo, I want to go on this campaign where this is what we do and this is what we start putting out to the world because I want to be able to attach myself to something in people's minds mm. intentionally. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So right. yeah, that's it. Yeah. I mean, and he's right because right now you're known as an event space owner. Right. Yep. So you have to, um, you have to introduce the new offer. And sometimes that, I guess maybe that could to your point also be a rebrand because yeah. you have to reintroduce yourself. Yeah. Um, and put it out there like, I'm no longer the event space owner, I'm the event space expert. Mm. Yep, 100%. I'm doing, I'm Yo, we're thinking about buying, speaking of, um, mm -hmm. there's a building down the street that we're thinking about buying. I'm actually going there right after this. You should come and tell me what your ideas would be. Yeah, absolutely, I got you. Wanna go? Yeah, we yeah. are. Oh, good. Yeah, right now. So, you t oh, so let's, let's talk about it. You wanna talk about it? Let's talk about it. So this, it's a, it's a venue not far from here, a building, a building not far from here. It is 1,800 mm -hmm. square, square feet. feet. Mm -hmm. That's it, it? Yes. So it's in an office complex and it's the floor of a building. So it's like a three-story building mm -hmm. and we're going to buy one floor of it. First of all- You can do that? Huh? You can do that? Yeah. Buy one floor of a building? Yeah. So- Buy. It's like, it's like a condo yeah, building. You buy one condo. Oh, mm -hmm. that's cool. Okay. They have those in New never York. Never seen too. that in New York, bro? Nah. That's not true. Nah. I'm not saying it's not. I just never seen it. Bro, that. the building that you sold to somebody else. Isn't Same that thing. like one? She's in a building. Yeah. She bought one. No, no, no. One we door. sold the business. She's still paying rent for that. Right, but the person who owns that space probably owns that space and somebody else owns all the rest of the stuff. No, 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 no. One own owner them. owns the entire property. Were? Yeah. Yeah. That's that I sold, happened. I sold yeah. the business and she continued out my lease. Which is hard. Actually, yeah, but that was good. That was it. <laughs> that's that's really hot. <laughs> Meaning, we could, yeah. we could do stuff. So anyway, we uh, there's a three. I think it's a three story building, and around back in the basement, I guess of this building, there is, and it's not even the whole floor. It's half of the floor. It's one suite, yeah, it's suite. basically that we're buying, and it's eighteen hundred square feet, or we're putting an offer on um, today. In fact, it's eighteen hundred square feet. The current owner recently renovated, like at in 2020 or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, it's a basic renovation. It's workable right now, but I think we would go in there and probably move a couple of walls out of the way because it's to her taste. Um, and we are thinking of making it an office space. We could make it an event center, but like for workshops and things like that, I would love to get your professional opinion mm -hmm. on, on what we want to do. The idea is to buy another building that can cash flow immediately so it can help us offset some of the costs on the major uh, renovation project that we have going on that's gonna cost us almost seven yeah. figures. And they want $250,000 for the space. Mm -hmm. So there's 1,800 square foot spot? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 250,000. And it's nearby here in Shambly? Yeah, 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 we're gonna go. It's, it's like great, less than 10 minutes yeah, away. But Dottie, uh, she was talking about like, yo, I don't wanna pay that. And I'm like, all right, I, I was thinking maybe 200. And Dottie's like 180. And I, I honestly, I honestly couldn't bring myself to text the lady because I still want the lady to like me. 
Like I mean, if, you're, if, you're, if your offer is not low enough for you to not get a response and it wasn't low enough. For sure. But Donnie, she was like, give me the number. I'll do it. So she told the lady the number. And that's what's up. Oh, I called her yesterday. 180. I hit Dave and said, yo, what's up with the property? We going to get it or no? Nah? He's like, I ain't been able to bring myself to asking for $70,000 less than asking. That's I exactly am. what I, I said. Am, bro. Like, I, I said, was... you're a little wuss. You you could out here, you can out entrepreneurs, but you can't tell a realtor $70,000 You can't negotiate less than? for yourself, you can't, but you that's can put crazy, entrepreneurs bro. in the hot Somebody seat. Somebody could put me in the hot seat and they'd and you would me fold? up. The concept is the concept. You would fold, boy. I, yeah, you would, I don't you know would. how I fold because I have great answers. But yeah, I just didn't. Anyway, so I called the lady <laughs> right after church, in fact. <laughs> Praise God. I called her right after church and I'm like, hey, we are interested in. Now, the way I framed it was okay. um, we are interested in putting an offer in on this property. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, David sees more potential in this property than I do. So I told him if we do this, I'm only willing to do 180. Bad cop. Bad cop. I like that. Mm hmm. I'm only willing to put in an offer for 180. Will you write this up? She's like, yeah, I'll write it up for you. And she didn't sound like wasting my time. She eagerly sent the checklist. Mm -hmm. She has eagerly followed up. That's she nice. literally just texts me now. Like I can show it to you. She literally. So it's promised. Like I, the building that we bought during the height of whatever was when it was listed, because it was listed for a couple of years. Yeah. The price that we got it for is hundreds of thousands of dollars cheaper. But let me tell you how it happened. So they had it listed for one point five million, mm -hmm. and I'm talking to how much did we get it for? Nine seventy five. Okay. But I, t but I was talking to I was talking to my boy. You know what I mean? Like, yo, bro. I told him last year, yo, I give him a million dollars right now. Take it back to him because that's my guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Me asking the owner directly. It would have been more nerve. -wrecking. You should feel more so, confident. You talking to the boss? No, 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 no. I rather talk to my boy. That's the he's the person in between the person, and I have a relationship with. See, him. I, I, me, I'm the opposite. I feel bad like lowballing like my people's. But well, it his it's building. not his he's building. Just he just he looks up and gets the commission if this works. Oh, right? he's a realtor. But okay, what okay. I'm saying is, in that case, what's that five six hundred thousand dollars almost yeah. that we got the property less than? And I just came on the back back end like, yo, I found a property. This is how much it costs. This is how much money you need to bring to the table. Cool, let's get it. In that case, that when I see transactions like that happen, that's been marked down more than five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. It says to me, 70, 000, a seventy thousand dollar ask is small. Yeah, hundred percent. And I the most we're, we're going to end up closing right around one ninety eight to two hundred two, for sure. But we're not going to close at that if we offer two hundred. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have a question. I, I like it. That's what a partnership is for. So I, I know, like the the plans is to offset the cost of this the the bigger uh, project that you got going on. That's one of the things. Okay, because I was concerned. Like, I know y'all got like a spot like in this building, right? Like a like a like this a cat. But mm -hmm. so again, we just bought a nearly million dollar property that's going to require a nearly million dollar renovation. Oh, bro. We need streams coming from everywhere. Okay, that mm -hmm. this this alone won't cash flow. One. Why not? Um, for for one thing, David and I are not partners on this building. So we can't take all of the money from this building and put it to the building that we are partners on, right? Oh, this is all... David owns this okay, building. Okay, okay. So it would be unreasonable to say, oh, Dave, all the money that you make take from this building, <laughs> let's put it on that. Understood. So we're, we're purchased, we have property ownership together and we're trying to find other streams that Understood. will help offset. Okay. The other thing, Dave, you made a really good point when we were on the tour. We have people right now, like this space is usually overbooked for the main revenue streams. We have people right now that are saying, hey, I need space. Like I want my own dedicated space. They can't have this. Dedicated space in terms of like- uh, Like for podcasting or, or office studio. use and things like that. They can't have these. These are rented by like the suites. hour or day. Correct. Suites. Suites, okay, okay. Yes, so that said, it's like, let's find a solution right now. Um, and then even offer them maybe the first opportunity to move into the new building. 100%. Um, so we're just trying to really be, it's not even as I think through it, that particular building, unless we find a model, and B, you can help us with this, unless we find a model that's hourly or daily, it's not really going to have, it's not going to generate enough cash flow mm -hmm. to really even help us with the Cleveland Avenue property. But it will be another asset that we own. Who yeah. knows? We may be able to flip it in a year or whatever, but it'll bring in a couple of dollars. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We're in the field. 
We need street. So we're basically mm-hmm. buying a, a condo of, right, an, no, a, of a building. Yeah, yeah, 1,800 square feet is, is, is definitely on the lighter side in terms of commercial space um, for that. So, I mean, the different avenues you have, like obviously the event space, and then you could go into like the salon suite model, which is like, you know, like you said, like, you know, maybe hairdressers, podcast people, whatever, like however you kind of want to outfit it. But that is like a strenuous hustle. Like yeah. I, I don't yeah. like that model well, at we all. We have, so like right now, those rooms that are in the front, mm-hmm. We rent those on a regular basis for the ones right here, right? Yeah, Mm -hmm. like somebody wants to come in and shoot their podcast, or somebody will come in and say, We need your team to shoot it, which is more expensive. Right. So we can, like, people need studios. Right, 100%. You know what I mean? Because people want to have their own, they don't want to, like, set up, break down, set up, break down, right? Like that. And if we have a, a space that we can customize, we can come set up for their show, break down, and create some sort of revenue model or some sort of pricing for you. Like say you have your own branding, right? And you don't ha- you don't own this studio, but every Tuesday you're gonna come here and shoot. By the time you get here, it's set up. We shoot it, break it down, we do all that work, but it's a revenue source for us. So Donnie came up with this idea saying, right now our mortgage is 32, 3,300? Mm-hmm, 3,300. For the 15,000 square foot. No, no, for the building we own together. The 15,000 square foot building. For the, the Cleveland one? Yes, yeah. okay, okay. our mortgage is 3,300. Yeah, so mm-hmm. her idea was, let's find an asset to at least take care of the mortgage of the on mortgage. that so that we don't have to pay it ourselves. Mm-hmm. Which I'm like, oh, that's genius. Yeah. Yeah. If it's 3,300, that's light. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you could pay that in either once or two events, or if you want to go the salon suite route, it's definitely much more of a hustle, though. I'm not going to lie. So we, we're we not going the salon suite route in that space particularly because I don't the even The creator think, suite, sorry. Yeah, a yeah. suite route. Um, but I even think, so I'm, as I'm sitting here listening um, and talking through it, would it be a higher cash flow potential if we did like a content space 100%. where you're doing it hourly versus not necessarily podcast only, but mm-hmm. maybe a room for podcasters, but different spaces where we create different walls and you know you can rent the space out and create your content and i know somebody's going to say it's a it's a bunch of those spaces available but it's not a bunch of those spaces being owned by david and donnie yeah and i think that with our brand people are just going to want to come there specifically and um there's not a bunch of those spaces who understand how to really do it well there are some I, i shoot at some often but i'm thinking that might even be a better model. Do you know what peer space is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have you looked at the rates on peer space in this area? We no, not for this building, but Hey, we don't get a lot of peer space love, do we? Kinda. It's been coming in? Uh, so what, what I'm what are the point of Oh, I'm first off, shouts out to my beautiful wife, okay? Cause once she got into the she's handling the whole uh bookings and all that kind of stuff. And she brought in a couple dollars. I love she it. She's going yeah. crazy. She's doing tours and all yeah. that. I'm like, okay, boo. Oh, is that what she's doing? Yeah. I love it. Absolutely. Are you paying her for it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so are we we're getting more, <laughs> fast, more fast, activity? Fast. More, but we still get more bookings through Honey Booking, Geekster, than Peer Space. Right, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. there, there, yeah. There's a ton of those uh, events, active wedding wire, honey uh, book, uh, not honey book, but honey book is just a, the CRM platform. Uh, Gigster, Splacer, Peer Space. What I was just gonna say is that like before you even go into that, you can in real time see what those spaces typically go for. Obviously, you can inflate the numbers because you have a personal brand. But like that's one, like one of the biggest things that we always do when somebody comes into our program is do something called the MCA. It's market comp analysis. Mm-hmm. And actually, I have a software coming out that's going to automate the entire process. Um, but with that, you'll be able to see in real time, like, all right, cool. How many bookings will I justly have to get with this level of input to pay that $3,300 a month? And yeah it may or may not be worth it to you. You know what I'm saying? But at least it'll give you a true indication of what you'll kind of be putting in. Cause like, just like, like I can kind of walk you through what that typically look like. Um, typically peer space, gigster space or things like that. It's events, production, or uh, office, like like meetings and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Those are the general three categories. Y'all are obviously probably looking at production and events, right? When it comes down to production, you have subcategories of like film, movie, podcast, audio, things of that nature. Typically, people pay for those per hour, like you said, and it's a lot of turnover. Mm-hmm. 
that's a headache. Like you're going to need somebody like, you know, your amazing office assistant to come and facilitate all that. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying like, with all that being said, like you really got to see if it's worth it because it's going to be a lot of turnover, a lot of wear and tear, a lot of back and forth and things like that to do 3,300. Not to say it's not impossible or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, there's six offices, I think, already set up. And, you know, that maybe because we're going to take down, I know, one wall at least. Um, even if we say rent it to someone for <laughs> three people for a thousand bucks a month to do whatever it is that they do, that covers the mortgage. And we still yeah. have three other spaces available. Um, we can still put one space in there where someone could come in and do small workshops for now. Yeah. Um, you know, things That's like tough. that. Yeah. So and have a space that we can provide a service for. And worst case scenario, like we'll use it for whatever we gonna do. For we'll do. Right. I need an office. Yeah, 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 for sure. I can use the whole eighteen hundred square feet. Actually, <laughs> right. so actually, you can rent it from us. I could rent it from us if it comes down to that. I could rent it from us. That's tough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if you as, like, yeah, just once you like play with the numbers and like, it makes sense. Like especially with the retainer clients, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. That's it right there. Let's just do that. The retainer and, clients. Um, yeah. We're gonna make some money. We're gonna make some money. 100%. Look, Brock's one thing David man. and I gonna do is make, <laughs> make some money. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Brian, uh, you did anything you wanted to talk about that we didn't talk about? Oh, uh, me personally, I'm just happy to be back here with y'all, man. Yeah. How long you been with your girl? Damn, why are you? Uh, well, actually, he said his life partner. Sure, 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 his sure, life sure. partner. But how long have you been with your life partner? Well, we made two years in October. Two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What made her your life partner? Why are you doing me like this First right all, now? This here, is the social proof podcast. Well, prove something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you started dating her almost two years ago, at the at the very beginning, were you dating other women? Oh, I was like dibbling, dabbling. Not like heavy, though. <laughs> Did you have to have dibbling, some conversations dabbling. with some people <laughs> to cut some stuff off? Oh uh, no. Just you just went ghost? Hey, Brian, first off, when I met my wife, I wasn't dibbling or dabbling. Okay. 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 That was the only thing. I didn't even date. I didn't even date nobody before. He was on Tinder. My wife is the first person I've ever dated in my entire life. Okay, that's how you answer that. Brian, okay. you were dibbling and dabbling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was very, 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 what, very, well, very. Well, what short does a later. dibble and a dabble look like? like? So, <laughs> I mean, the best way I could kind of phrase it is just like you know. Obviously, I didn't know that I would meet my now girlfriend at that time. So like I had other situations pre-existing, but like once I realized that this is something that I want to dedicate all my attention to, I dropped that. Well, and so the drop, what what's the SOP on that? What's the SOP on that? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So the the objective of that position yeah. is to no longer communicate with pre-existing relationships in order to fulfill your contractual obligations with your now. Do you, do you call them and let them know or you just ghost? Right, right, right. So here's a step-by-step -step protocol on that, right? So basically it, it, it goes into two categories. You have your roster, right? Okay. And then you have your significance. Okay. Right? Okay, so the roster, you don't really need to have a conversation with. The roster is just more so like, you don't hear from me, that's what's up. I like, think it's all a roster. You have your starters. True, true, true. You have your true, bench. True, you have your starters true, and your bench. True, true. Right, right. You have your all star players and you have your bench. Yeah, because right? you don't got to explain to the bench why they're not playing right now. So like, you exactly, don't have yeah, exactly. Sure, that's my sure. point. You feel what I'm they saying? They show up, just wear the jersey just because. Right. Exactly. You feel what I'm hey, saying? Hey, whenever you want to put me in, you feel I'm me? Here. So you don't really got to explain to the bench that this is what it is. Like, you know what it is. But like your all star team, you kind of have to like maybe massage the conversation, be like, you know, I'm. You don't really got to get too direct with it. Just like more so like, you know, I'm, I'm working on some things. I got this project. Blah, 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 woo, woo. You know what I'm saying? Yes, dude, what's easy? We got a new team captain trying out right now. We have a new team captain, you know. Uh, we're, we're making some trades. You know what I'm saying? We're bringing in some new talent. <laughs> easier as an entrepreneur. Uh, single or committed relationship. It could be either or. It depends on you. Your situation. I'm it, asking you. Oh, on my particular situation? Yeah. Uh, definitely committed. Yeah. Definitely committed an because answer. being- And I don't think I can get the real answer until- No, no. I'll give y'all the real answer. Not for sure because- well, We thing, don't know if it's the real answer because it's a very biased situation right now. But I mean, you're asking my I situation. know, but I'm letting you know that I don't want to 100% believe you. Not that it's- Oh, wrong. And okay. we know that his girl is going to watch this episode, so yeah, he has yeah, to carefully yeah, curate yeah, yeah. how he's No, no, no. No is. curation. This is what I would say to her. Like, okay. if I was on FaceTime Tell right now. Why. Call her on FaceTime and say the same thing. She's asleep right now. Dang. 
Tell me, tell me why. Why y'all relation- being messy? <laughs> <laughs> she started it first off. You started so it. You actually started it. How did I? Did I? Yes. <laughs> All right. So why? Roll is, the clip. Roll why, the clip. Roll the clip. Why is being in a committed relationship better for me? For you as an entrepreneur, yes. Because as an entrepreneur, the number one thing that's going to set you apart from success is focus. So by me only being in a monogamous relationship, I don't have to worry about hunting. I don't have to worry about being outside. I don't have to worry about none of that. Were you a hunter-gatherer? I'm a hunter. You were a hunter. Uh, I mean, like, I'm... When I say I'm a hunter, like, that's of, like, type A personality. Like, I I go after... Were you a hunter-gatherer before your... Did you hunt and gather your current situation? Uh, yeah, I mean, you have to. I'm a man. You have to. Women don't come up to guys like that. I mean, I don't know. Atlanta different. Not everybody's a hunter, though. I'm a Nobody hunter. would describe themselves as a hunter. Like, yo, yeah. I'm going to the club, and I am hunting here. I used to go to the club because I like the music. If I meet somebody, I meet somebody great, but... Okay. Why you had to kick your feet up like that? <laughs> Yo, right? That was zesty, <laughs> like, bro. Uh, uh, He's quick, like, I went to the hey, club and commercial break. I meet somebody. I meet somebody. Quick you know? commercial break. Uh, soul. What's the Instagram? Soul Briety. S O L B S O L E B R I T Y. Anyway, it doesn't matter because you guys can click the Instagram link in shoes. this video. But these shoes are so hard. Yeah. Oh, these ain't even out at the time when I'm watching them. Soul Briety 409. Appreciate you. He is our sneaker plug. He is our sneaker plug. He did not plug these. These are my own understanding. He would and not I love, get those. He would, he would not plug these, okay? But these are <laughs> these are hard, first of all. But those things right there. I walked in the studio today and I said, wow, Dave, you, you look nice, actually. Nice. I appreciate it. Okay. So you're a hunter. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I go after what I want, 100%. I mean, like, I, I did that with her. You feel me? Uh, and that was, like, actually the third... That was the third follow up, really, uh, mm. to get her. Yeah, because we we met at the gym, uh, the first time basically. Shout out to athletic clubs, ladies. I keep telling y'all to go to the gym, work out. Actually, was she working out? Mm-hmm. Actually, work out. Be focused on your workout. It's something about a woman who's focused on her body. Hundred percent. That men love. Hundred percent. Yeah, that's real. I'm, a, I'm a, like all my young men who's working, like who's really watching this video, like on, on the road. Like I'm gonna keep it a stat with you. The baddies, gym, Target, Starbucks. You're welcome. That is a really good. You're welcome. That's, You're a, welcome. that's, that's a really good You're formula. Welcome. Don't be trying to find your wife Target, in the club, Starlets, all that. Don't be doing that. Like the gym, Target. Did you say Starlets? Huh? What Starlets? Strip. Is that the little back play? I think it's Starlets, like the little massage, the massage. Oh, Starlight. Place. No, 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 no. Never mind. We, we off camera, off camera. No, nah, where you? No, is it the one where they got the no, back? No, no, no. Starlets is a, is a strip. Is it strip in the strip club? Yeah. No. Well, yeah. No, I'm saying about- don't do that. I'm saying don't do that. Have you ever hunted? In the- no. So I don't that? necessarily agree with that. I get the overarching thought, right? Mm-hmm. But even in my 20s, like people would say, don't go to the club if you're looking for a good person. And I was like, well, I'm in the club. I'm a pretty good person. Well, let's look at per Have capita. you ever gone to the club? Have you ever gone to the club before? Yeah, of course. Would you consider yourself a good person? 100%. So I just think that there needs to be more criteria. I think that when men specifically get in a club, they want to find the baddest chick, the most naked chick, the one who's drinking the most. Like they want to find the easy options the easy in the kill. club, the easy kill most of the time. And you got to look for the one who's going to give you a little bit of pushback and resistance. But that's not the mindset. In the I club. want the shy friend. I want the shy friend. I want the one who's not saying too much. Don't normally do this. I want the one who just bought her own drink. <laughs> All of them in the club. Yo, ain't no, normally. I, 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 I never went to the club looking for something serious because exactly I know I I don't go to the club. I've never been in a club like that where I'm just out there all the time. And if we got together, I'm shutting that down. It's hard for me to meet you in a club and say, you can't go to the but club. But you see, right that's now. the thing. Like that might be her real element. And now you're trying to change the person you're that's trying to I'm be saying. with. Or now we club. just go to the club together. I'm, I'm not going good. to go home. No, I'm Once good. you get a girl, I'm going, I'm we good. going home. Yeah, we stay home. It's cool, but we just because home. you get a girl doesn't mean that you can't still experience the things that brought you guys both fun at some point. Like, we may not go to the club as much because now I want to go to the movies and I want to go on dinner dates. But, oh, look, look, spot right there is popping. Let's go in here and get some music, grab a drink. Donna, you really cranberry sure juice. I am not. Mm. <gasps> 
when you were what you trying to say how often did you go to the club with your dude how often we only went to clubs like on special occasions exactly yeah but, so, but that's just because I'm not a club person right that's exactly what I'm saying. So, there are some people they want to meet their person in the club because they want to go to the club that's that lifestyle yeah that's not my but lifestyle you don't here's my thing on the club women aren't going to the club to hang out with their girls they're going to the club to be looked at to maybe be seen not seen but maybe they're hunting they're hunter gatherers too mm -hmm. right they're not just go you could hang out with your friends and laugh and eat popcorn at the house but i think when women go to the club it's you're looking for something not or you're true. looking to be seen. Not always true. I'm not, there's not, there's never always, yeah. never a hundred percent. I mean, because there's been plenty of times I've gone into the lounge and I want the seat in the corner, like away from the crowd, but I enjoyed the environment. Like, where can you really go these days? I'm a music, like music is my first love. Mm -hmm. And I love being in an environment with music playing loudly. So I'm not necessarily in the club. And I like all music, trap music, hood music, street music, ratchet music. I want it, I want r and I want it all, yes. right? So there are times where I could just go and sit in the corner. I love the people watch and I just want to be in an environment of music. It makes me be really creative. Good. I'm not trying to be seen. Your girl, she says, I'm not hanging out with nobody, but I want to go to the club and listen to some music by myself. Can she go? Not by myself. To be very honest, I probably I'll be with friends. I wouldn't. That would have been a tell from the beginning of the relationship. And I would be like, no. Right. So that's so, what I'm saying. So she My, can't. So then, okay. She, so that's not of her it. character. No, but pretend it is. Pretend that she really loves music, and she says, "Like, I, I really just love music." Give her another option because you can give me another option. The answer's no. She you would could, want me to go with her. Exactly, and that's what I just said. But go she together. Do that. I cool. want to. Well, so I. Think you could go really, to a restaurant, get music, get vibes, get all of that. You don't gotta go fine. to a restaurant with live music. That's fine. Yeah. So the, all I'm saying is give another option not just like you can't you can't come into the relationship and say oh this is where we met i understand that you love listening to music played out loud but nope shut it down 100 percent. and, and then you still don't want to do any of this with me like that's you no, completely ignoring my desire so now you can say look you know ain't nothing in the club why don't we go to the lounge together you got to compromise on yeah, that no, I, that's cool i'm just saying that's not going to be that. That was just one of my reasons why I never wanted to meet somebody in the club to take seriously because I don't know whether they like that environment or not. OK, but that's that's unfair because How's you and Dre fair? met you and Dre met on Tinder on and that's Tinder. that's an even worse For environment real? to me. That's not necessarily that true. It that's is not, like people that's are a looking at it. Yeah, it is a dating. dating app, but people are not. Uh, you know, all, you can't there say are that, more. Though. Nope. There are more profiles that say not interested in a commitment than there are profiles that say sure. I am interested in a commitment. That's the point. So that man. that's not that's a dating heavy app. No, but on the dating app it shows if you're interested, great. That's what I'm talking to. So if you you're mean not to interested. tell me somebody couldn't meet you in the club and say, Hey, look, I, I really don't come here often. I just I'm really interested in dating. Can that same thing there's not no happen? Apps, there's no absolutes. There, All I'm 100%. saying is my preference is the possibility that the person that's in the club likes going to the club. It's a high possibility. And 100%, I don't want 100%. to be with somebody who likes going to the club. So For the sure. is different because it's showing exactly what you like. Oh, you're interested in meeting other people? Like I mentioned. How other many people. people did you have to scroll through before you got to that person? Mad people. Yeah. So in the club, all I'm saying is don't knock somebody. I'm not a club goer. I didn't knock anybody. I'm yes, you my, kinda I are. said my preference. Right. I, understand, I don't care what y'all do with y'all like. But when I said my preference or when I said something, you're like, no, nah, that can't happen. Don't tell me it can't happen when you're We'd if you're willing to scroll tapes. through. Because when I'm on social, when I'm on dating apps, I gotta scroll through a hundred guys before so I find one. You do use dating apps. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Okay, okay. I I have to scroll through a hundred guys before I find one that could even DM me, mm. right? Or that I'm interested in DMing. It's the same thing in the club. Mm. I don't go to the club, but if I did, I used to go to the club and I would like for somebody to not immediately disqualify me because I'm in a place enjoying music. Mm. I'm not dating no thotties that be in the club. All right, so it's, tw it's a lot. You I gotta go. I gotta <laughs> uh, great conversation. Goodness gracious, it's been 90 minutes. We've yeah. been here for an hour and a half. So make sure y'all connect with Brian. Uh, How be? Yo, definitely what, follow me on Instagram at Billionaire B, YouTube at Billionaire B, and let's get active. Yes, get active, okay?
And oh, make sure y'all subscribe to the Social Proof Podcast with David and Donnie, mm. your host of the greatest entrepreneurship podcast in the world. And That's your host of what? Say it one more time. The greatest entrepreneurship podcast in the world. One more time. One more time. The greatest entrepreneurship hey. podcast All together, in the world. The, what? <laughs> the greatest, greatest entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship podcast, podcast in, in the, the world. world. Absolutely. We out here. Like, subscribe, I don't subscribe, think there's any better y'all. way to close that. <laughs> we we out. out. Let's get it. <laughs> you said it's 25 minutes. If you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.